The other day, I was wondering why BB King's singing is often overlooked. I mean, I enjoy listening to it just as much as his guitar playing. This mirrors what comes to mind when I hear him playing guitar. Let's hear him singing from Paying the Cost to Be the Boss, but play it on guitar and compare it to his intro solo. Now, why do you think his singing has anything to do with his guitar playing? To understand the power of B.B. King's soloing approach, I need to show you why you must always first listen to the vocals, because often when someone approaches soloing over a song, they focus too much on what scale to use, and they lose sight of the big picture, which can end up sounding, you know, kind of like this. But when you get the vocal melody in your ears, you're much more likely to play in a way that's connected to the song. Even if you don't really play the melody, it just helps to get the right vibe and prevent disconnected noodling. Now there's something that he does when he's singing that everybody does all day, every day, but he also does it in his playing, so let's listen to the vocals but on guitar again. We all have to breathe, and naturally when singing, it causes the singer to leave space between phrases. And B.B. King did such a great job of having clear phrases with his soloing and leaving space between them like he was taking a breath. We're gonna look at why I think of a mirror when I hear B.B. King soloing, but first we have to understand one more fundamental aspect of his singing and playing. I went to school for jazz and one of the best things I gained from it was being exposed to a vast amount of amazing music that I had never heard before. You know, spending like countless hours listening to it was probably more beneficial than all the theory I learned. So let's listen one last time and notice something other than taking breaths that is shaping the vocals. What is pretty much a staple of B.B. King singing and his playing is having a clear call and response. You know, it's pretty much a staple of blues, and you can think of it as a conversation between two people or a question followed by an answer. But at its core, it's making sure that the phrases played aren't just random and that they're connected to each other, you know, in a meaningful way. Whenever I listen to B.B. King's solos, I'm always struck by the depth of emotion that he channeled through his guitar. It's as if he was bearing his soul to the world, and every note he played was a reflection of that. You know, when I say close my eyes, and hear him playing, I can't help but picture a mirror capturing and reflecting his soulful singing back. In that sense, his music is not just a collection of notes, but more like a window into his very being. And that's a hard thing to just you know, snap your fingers and have come alive in your own playing. But one way to start is to try singing along with what you play or simply only playing when you breathe out or taking a break when you breathe in. So you might be asking yourself, how do I get more of a vocal-like sound the way B.B. King did so well, but of course in my own style? Well, I put together a free mini course called Make Your Guitar Sing. Using Don't Let Me Down by the Beatles as a simple example, I break down how to figure out the vocal melody, learn the details of how a singer shapes the notes, and how to apply it to guitar so you can get the more out of that common rut of just sounding like you're just soloing with one scale. You can find the link for the free course in the description down below, or just scan this QR code here. Now we looked at how B.B. King's singing influences his playing to have more space and a call and response effect, but there's something else that we can learn from singers that has an even bigger impact on our playing. So check out this video here where we look at how Etta James interprets I Rather Go Blind and how you can apply it to improve your own playing.